Hey guys, Damsel in Dystonia here. And Fred Cat's on my lap, so you'll probably see him jumping up and down, whatever. He's pretty comfortable though. He's down here just snoozing. Kitty cat. See? Big, 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 Fred Cat. Say hi, Fred Cat. <laughs> he didn't like me moving him. He was comfortable. Ow! Ow! Bit me. Ow! Quit! Um. Anyway, hi. I'll take my glasses off because there's a horrible glare on them, so. So, just don't, hey, that's my glasses. Ow! Evil, evil cat. Anyway. <laughs> she did. Dystonia. Okay, Fred, you're gonna get down. Ow! It's been a while. Uh, since I've been on here, so hi. Um, it's been two weeks since I've had a disruptive attack. I've been able to maintain my work schedule for the most part. Um, new symptoms, focus, lots of problems here lately, uh, confusion. Losing time, and when I say losing time, not like I just forget to look at the clock or, you know, I don't know what time it is, nothing like that. I mean, like, I have no idea what I've just been doing. It's almost as if I'm having, like, a little bloop in my mind or something. I don't, I don't know. I'm not passing out. I'm not blacking out, but I'd say I, I maybe I'm zoning out. I don't know. That's probably where the confusion is coming from, too, when I'm be doing something and then have no idea what I was doing and could just feel completely lost. Um, anyway, let's see. Uh, focus. Shit. Oh, word recall. Uh, I've been having problems with word recall for several years now. It started initially back around 2011-ish uh, with some horrible, um, severe migraines I used to have. I was actually treated for severe migraines. I was put on Topamax uh, for like a year, uh, which wasn't exactly great, but it did help the migraines and then uh, went off of it because it was I was having some issues uh, because of the Topamax. Uh, I was starting to have some issues with it, so the doctor took me off. But anyway, so... Um, trying to think. Um, sorry if my chin keeps. I I can't actually see what I'm doing. <laughs> um, work, doing okay. Those issues I just mentioned I have started to become problematic. I'm catching the problems before I turn in my reports and things, but so problematic. And these little blurps I'm getting in my mind is like a, I like to describe it like a uh, scratched CD. You, you just kind of skip, or like a scratched record where it might like skip. Um, I will say something, the conversation, whatnot, I don't know, just be saying something and we'll say the exact same thing. The exact same way, exact same tone, same word inflections. Like I will like, like there's a skip, and it just is on repeat. It gets worse when I'm in an attack, um, not because I'm not knowing what I'm saying, but because like I get like the spasms in my, I, I don't I don't know, I, I really just I don't know. But anyway, word recall has been a big problem. I've had to ask coworkers, hey, be talking about something. What's that word I'm looking for? I did it today like freaking five times uh, or more. I really don't know. I just, I'm doing it a lot, a lot lately. Um, memory loss, confusion, losing time, um, clumsiness, the uh, paralysis type attacks, those don't happen quite as often, and they were explained to me uh, by Dr. Zayas as um, non-epileptic events. However, I'm starting to wonder if that is what they are, because they're not happening that often, maybe once every month or every other month. 
Um, it's been a few weeks since I've had one like that. Uh, there's things that happen with those attacks that I've, I'm realizing now, like I will get uh, nauseous. I, I've been getting you know, I, I don't know why. Like I'm like, do I have a flu? No, I don't have a flu. What the hell's going on? I just get nauseous. Anyway, um, I'll get really strong nausea um, before those paralysis type attacks happen. Um, I'll get a heaviness in my arms, pins and needles almost, like they're going to sleep, like numb. Um, of course, then the rigidity sets in. Uh, the the like where I feel like my face is paralyzed like I feel like my face is drooping um, that's been consistent every time I've had one I feel like I'm drooling which I kind of do drool with them um, but I know what's going on I just can't do anything about it my whole body just is like paralyzed I'm not spazzing out um, with these type of attacks um, now there has been like one where it's kind of started the same type of way but I'll go into like bad contortions and spasms and all that crap like I do with the dystonia attacks um, but I'll have like the, the the strong nausea and the tingling and all that like I do with the paralysis attacks it's like they're both happening at once but the dystonia is overriding these paralysis feelings so my body's like jerking everywhere uh, but the last one I had I did not jerk everywhere, it was just, I was just frozen in place. I couldn't move, I was like paralyzed. Um, couldn't talk, tried, my, couldn't move my mouth. So, oh, you can see Fred Cat back there. He is such a turd. He's probably gonna knock down my poster board just to, just so you can see my mess behind there. It's a bunch of paperwork. Um, anyway. Being back to work now since, of course, April, um, it's been two weeks since I've had a disruptive episode where I've had to leave work. I've, since being back, have only missed two full days of work due to dystonia. Um, and I've missed two half days. I, the attacks episodes usually have started, both times they've started after lunch. Um, and if they don't start getting better within 10 to 15 minutes and they still continue, then I know pretty much that it's gonna just get worse. And it typically does until I'm sitting at my desk in a funky position. And this last time I got, I walked out looking like I was in an arm bar. <laughs> and of course I wasn't, it was just a dystonia. Um, but I'm thankful that it hasn't been more disruptive. I'm. I'm glad that for the most part I've I've been doing fine at work, keeping up with my work just fine. Um, so doing good. Dr. Zayas, I get to go back and see him. He is at the Illinois Neurological Institute, and oh my gosh, I feel like I just told you guys this, and I don't know if I did. So uh, when I edit this, maybe I'll find out. But I'm just gonna leave this in here anyway. Anyway, my sister works at OSF. Uh, in Illinois and Peoria and um, Illinois Neurological Institute affiliated with OSF and Dr. Zayas moved there from Quincy where I was seeing him um, to teach at the Neurological Institute there and uh, originally I was told that he wasn't going to be actually doing patients or something or seeing patients but I guess he is now so the nurse knows my sister, my sister knows his nurse, so she was talking to him over Father's Day weekend, like texting him, like, oh my gosh, my sister's having these new symptoms, what do we do, They're, these new symptoms are, you know, they sound like they could be MS, uh, muscular sclerosis symptoms, um, which, I don't know, I need answers, because I feel like the dystonia is definitely overlapping something else, there's something else underlying, um, I've been having some of these issues for so many years now that's way before the, the dystonia crap started so I'm really starting to wonder if whatever else is going on that if it's not actually progressing whatever it is um, July 6th so is my return appointment with Dr. Zayas I'm hoping to get referred re-referred to the Mayo Clinic since I had to miss my initial appointment up there. 
if they don't take me this time, then it looks like maybe the University of Kentucky, um, where they have a movement disorder program as well. Um, been shaky today, off and on, not horrible, um, but I feel like it's starting to get worse now. So, yeah, and I'm looking in my camera, I can tell. Anyway, Dystonia Medical Research Foundation, they go to their website, they're doing the zoo, uh, zoo walks to raise awareness for dystonia. And St. Louis Zoo is having theirs at the end of August. I do still plan to be there as long as I'm able to be there. I will be there. Um, you go to their website though, you can register to walk for dystonia. And I hope that you do. Um, over here in the U.S., it still doesn't seem to have a lot of uh, support, awareness, isn't as widespread here as it is in the U.K. Um, and uh, other countries uh, over in Europe, uh, I mean, around Europe, it seems like it's everywhere. Like, they have support everywhere over there. Sorry. Uh, keto diet, something else I wanted to touch on. I was doing really well on the keto when I was home. Uh, now that I've been back to work, uh, I'm just, I'm not able to stick to it as well as I was because, as you can see, I'm extremely tired now. Um, by the time I get home from work, all I want to do is go to sleep. Uh, I am having trouble resting and getting, I'm having trouble getting enough rest, which I think is why I'm back to having an attack about every other week, because um, I'm not getting enough rest. Even on the weekends, I'm just, um, I'm, I think I've gotten to the point several times where I'm so tired, uh, I can't go to sleep, I don't know, which is just silly, because I am a certified mindfulness meditation instructor. I'm also a certified hypnotherapist, professional hypnotherapist, like for real. And I have the tools to be able to help myself. And um, sometimes though, even when you got the tools, you're just too damn tired to do anything. And when you have trouble focusing and concentrating, uh, self-hypnosis is really hard. My mind is wondering too much, um, and I'm just too tired. I just, I can't, I haven't, I can't say can't, because I know maybe I could, I don't know. Every time it seems like I've tried to do self-hypnosis to help myself relax and go into a, a nice state of mind where my body feels good and turn down the pain levels and relax the muscles. Um, something pops in my head and I'm not able to stay on track. So focus has been a big problem. That and the confusion and the loss of time and memory loss and the word recall and the clumsiness. Oh my god. If I have another bruise from I don't know what, I'm just... I have a huge bruise on my thigh right now. I don't even know what I did. No clue. So, anyway, I'm going to go because I'm feeling funny. So, I'm going to go now. I'm going to go lay down. I. But, anyway, I do want to say thank you for watching. Please share my videos. Um, raise awareness. Help people know that they're not alone. Um, there's so many things out there that people feel so isolated. And this is one of those. I feel isolated. I know I've got support, but I feel isolated. I haven't met another person locally that has a functioning disorder like this. Um, cancer, yeah, at least you know treatment, you know. And that might sound quite kind of cold, and I don't mean it to sound that way, but living with this really does suck, um, because you just don't know when it's going to strike, 
and that's a problem. We also don't know what kind of treatments to use and when you're told by your doctor that your functional dystonia isn't, uh, it won't respond to drugs and it won't respond to deep brain stimulation and Botox injections and everything that they do to treat dystonia, the type I have doesn't respond to that. Um, when your specialist tells you that most specialists go through their whole lifetimes and never see a case like mine because functional dystonia is, I guess, apparently really hard and rare to diagnose or even find real cases of makes you feel kind of cool at one point because you're like, ooh, wow, I am kind of weird and unique. And at the same time you're like, well, shit. <sighs> there goes any kind of hope for a treatment, right? Well, so kind of go back and forth on those feelings a lot. Um, and when I go through, uh, when, I, when I've hit a one week mark with no symptoms, I think maybe it's all in my head. Maybe this is just like, it's a flim flam, right? And then you have a symptom, and that symptom turns into a full-blown dystonic storm. And you're like, oh, oh yeah, this is what it's like. This sucks. And you realize, well, I didn't cause it to happen, so... I don't... I, anyway. It still sucks, but I'm still smiling. I mean, I'm still alive. I'm getting ready to go for this drastic new hairstyle tomorrow night. Uh, so next time you guys see me, I will probably have, like, a faux hawk. I'm gonna go something, like, really wild. Unless I chicken out. Even if I chicken out, I'm still gonna go with, like, this short hairstyle. Like, I've got it pulled up right now, but, you know. Something that's a little bit easier to take care of and fun. I, I need something to make me feel sassier. And, yeah. So, I'm gonna hopefully feel sassy and cute anyway well that's my cue Fred is getting irritated and uh, so keep watching keep supporting check out the dystonia medical research foundation's webpage do the zoo walks do things to help raise awareness for people that you might know that suffer from movement disorders uh, such as dystonia Parkinson's Huntington's Wilson's like there's so many things out there that cause movement disorders and um, and they all suck man but hey at least we're burning calories right so y'all have a good night and thanks a lot for watching.